Welcome back, it's Kyle with All In Survival, and today we're going to talk about battle belts. We'll get into this one just a little bit, we're going to tear it down. But first, why would we have a battle belt? This could be the difference between a range belt and a battle belt. It's going to be slight, but there is a difference. So, first definition of battle belt is... It's something that you've already put together. It's not something you have to put together on the fly when something goes down. It's already put together. It has the ability for first line equipment when it comes to combat capabilities. We need some pistol magazines, an AR magazine, some kind of medical, and a good solid tactical style holster that's not going to break or let your weapon drop out when you hit the ground and roll. So, we'll get into this in just a bit. All right, before we get started tearing it down and looking at the pieces individually, I wanted to talk a little bit about the overall look and feel of the belt. It is extremely light. It is a 1.75 inch belt with, it's partially thickened, that way it's got some serious rigidity. And it's also got these laser cut webbing. I think it's great. They have the ability to do either one, the webbing or go over the top as a. On most battle belts, we're gonna do two magazine holders. These are also direct action. Um, they call them the speed reload, and I think that's just because there's not a flap over the top that, you, that holds them in. This is also considered a speed reload. And once we take this off, I'm going to show you. These have some very interesting way of connecting to the belt, which I really, really like. We got a dump pouch, which is pretty small. It's a smaller dump pouch. Um, you can use it for a million different things. This is a Coyote Tactical Solutions Burrito. We're gonna dig into that, but uh, I think it's the perfect combination of size and capability. This is your uh, plugging holes kit. Uh, I believe that you should have a full, full, very full IFAC available to you. Um, but having one of those on your actual battle belt is extremely cumbersome, so. We went with that. This is a G-code holster, and uh, I went with the, the thigh um, elastic too. And down at the end is also an, a second um, tourniquet holder. All of this is wrapped, instead of having to use belt keepers, which is very, most people in the military or in uh, law enforcement are very um, familiar with keepers. They went with hook and loop on the inside and also a hook and loop inner belt. And this is called the Mustang inner belt. And uh, the connection is very stable and solid. I really like it. And extremely, extremely light. <laughs> Can't say that enough. It's really light. If I didn't have so much ammo right here, you'd barely even know this belt is on. So, all right, we're going to tear it down. All right, one of the things I wanted to talk about is this very interesting hookup that this uh, direct action company has done. Now, I wasn't able to find a ton of information on direct action, but as far as I can gather, it's, it's a German or Belgium company that has been designing um, the highest quality tactical gear when it comes to high-end law enforcement and high-end military. And as far as I know, um, I've done some searching on for reviews and it's, it's mostly positive. So um, this piece is kind of like a taco. You know, everybody got really big into those for a while and I really liked them, but the plastic here, especially if you're in a hot environment, would crack and they would start to do this weird funky thing. So this is kind of an interesting concept. 
And what I want you to notice is this um, 550 cord, right? This is how you're going to latch it onto the 1.75 belt. It, it doesn't seem like it would do much. Um, you can also take this through and also run it through the webbing. Um, but I have chosen after looking at this a little closer, this is incredibly tight. Now I'm gonna show you how. So if you put this on in this direction, right? You, you can pull it off if there's no tension, right? This is, you can feel it, right? You can pull it on and off. But as soon as you put the belt on, it, it starts to pull and puts tension on it. And it is an extremely tight lockup. It's really good. And uh, so far I've found it, you know, I've had several belts where um, you'd put the belt on and then you'd have to slide all of your equipment to where you wanted it to begin with, right? So this belt is kind of a, a perfect combination of being able to do both. I really like it. So anyways, here's a, maybe a little bit better way to look at this. So you've got this. 550 cord and it's in there and you can also use the webbing you can use this on the webbing and that's fine but you'll be surprised on how what a good lockup you get with just these 550 cord so we're gonna we'll go ahead and put this one on just on camera slide it in and if you if you start to put it through the other side as soon as you've got it kind of here, you'll notice that it starts to, it'll start to grip and you will have a hard time um, getting it all the way through. That's why I have kind of learned that you just put one side in. And then go back and try and loop the other side. So get it pretty close to where you want it before you pull it tight, because as soon as you do, it is pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. All right, so, bring it over. Okay, so I'm giving it a pretty good and that's not even on. Once it's on, it's this is going to be attached to the hook and loop on your inner belt, and it's a pretty solid hookup. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and we can talk about a couple other things. This dump pouch, it's nothing fancy. There are several companies that make decent dump pouches. This one is got a mesh at the bottom for any water or rain or sand, usually sand. Uh, you throw in, go ahead and throw in. And it's also got that same 1.75 where you slide it this way, right? I think that that's really great. You also get the option in, in the packaging to use the webbing hookups, which I've never been a fan of these, never. But they give them to you anyways for those old school guys, of course, like myself, who haven't changed their ways. And so a dump pouch is not necessary. Um, I've just used it over the years for utility. To be perfectly honest, most of the time my, my iPro ends up in there and uh, my water bottle and a lot of other things. Usually not the, the magazines, because I'm not usually doing tactical mag drops. So, all right, let's take a look at this. This is the Coyote, uh, Coyote's Tactical Solutions. And I found this, to be honest, I found it through Pinterest. Somebody had posted a picture of this, and it is, it's a really good quality. I've, I've been impressed so far. And I, Obviously, it's nice and clean, and it's uh, it hasn't been abused yet. But 
it comes, I mean, in this right here is extremely light. I mean, it's not adding much. And uh, it's got all the, you know, what you would normally see in a, in a smaller IFAC. Uh, it does have compression needle. Um, there is several other things. Let's go ahead and lay it all out and I'll, and I'll bring it right back. All right, I laid it all out for you. And uh, it's pretty impressive. They jam a pretty darn good kit into that small amount of space. Uh, you've got your uh, nasal straw. Um, I hate these things. Uh, unfortunately, I woke up with one of those in my uh, nose one time and uh, I wanted to kill the person who put it in. But fog tape, frog tape is awesome. The frog tape is absolutely, it's like uh, bomb proof. It's amazing. In fact, I'm going to find some more of this. I didn't, I totally forgot that was even in there. They give you two chest seals, a four inch uh, trauma dressing, and a combat gauze. Uh, this has all the good quick clot in it. And for shock, you've got your blanket. They went ahead and gave you a compression uh, needle for air release. If you're not trained in using one of these, do not mess with this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pack that back up and then I'm gonna move on to talking a little bit about the holster. All right, next we're gonna talk about the G-Code XST, RTI Kydex. And so I found, I've used G-Code several times over the last, Oh, 15 years and I really like their holsters. I will say that this is not a draw gunfighter style holster. Um, it is a very, very strong positive um, hold for your pistol. It also has a modular to be able to take this off. You can change out different holsters or maybe you wanna put this one on a, a different style of rig. I really like that. That's the RTI system, the RTI wheel. I've used in numerous different setups. Um, however, as a law enforcement guy, I'll have to say that my Safari Land uh, is a faster draw. Um, and that's okay. That's, I mean, this is a, to be honest, uh, when it comes to tactical style pistol holsters and outside the waistband, holsters uh very rarely are you going to be drawing for your pistol first and secondly uh very rarely are you going to be drawing guns fighter style so and when i say that very rarely i mean like next to never but it's quick enough it is uh, but what it lacks in speed, it holds in retention, right? So this is a very strong, positive lockup. And when you put the, the pistol in here, it's a very positive lockup. So um, I like that. And we're going to go ahead and put this on. So when it comes to locking up where your pistol is going to go, um, for me, I've already, I, I've already designated a spot on this belt. And it's got... It's got some hook and loop on the inside so that once you're in the spot, it pretty much locks in. I will use some, uh, maybe some 550 cord slash some, some zip ties to lock this in even better. But for me, I, I want two and that pretty much sets it right at my, at my 45. So. Last but not least, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that last section right here that a lot of times people leave open or they put a knife on. Um, for me, I'm adding a secondary uh, tourniquet, right? Um, I was in Baghdad for an invasion of Baghdad along with my unit and um, we had the old style. Make a tournament kit yourself with whatever you got handy. So 
Unfortunately, I saw where uh, these would have been um, a life-saving device, and uh, I will forever keep at least a couple of them close to me. One for myself, and two, I would like to have an, an additional one to be able to hand out and use for somebody else. You, you can't save somebody's life if you're already injured, but um, if you have two, you might be able to pass one off. So let's go ahead and put that on, and we'll move on. To keep this one from moving around, what I've done is I'm going to run it inside this last loop right here. And it's got several little hookups here. And I'm going to do that off camera because this uh, the way that I'm standing is not really working. All right, super easy to forget how hard it is to mess around with hook and loop and webbing. So uh, just so we can see, I used a couple of, I used a key and a tool to jam that in, in there. And that gives it a very stable uh, lockup. The alternative was this. And that's fine here as long as this one's nice and locked in. This is... Pretty, pretty good too. So anyways, all right, so let's, all right, so we're just about to finish this up. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the buckle and this is the bottom of the buckle. So not to forget, that needs to go on the bottom. Now, this particular setup is designed to go backwards. So what the first thing we're gonna do is slide the retaining bottom, right? So bottom, put that in, bring it across and down. All right. Now, I can undo this, this, this one, open this up a little bit. Now we don't want to mess around too much because I need to set the size and I'm going to do that now. All right. All right. So for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and put the Mustang inner belts on. We've go, we went ahead and put this back together and we're going to check the lockup and the size. Too bad. It's got a nice Not too bad. It does everything it's supposed to. It's not too cumbersome. It keeps your first line gear close. And you have a little bit of extra room to add a few other things if you needed to, like a Gerber or whatever, a cuff case. Potentially, I might want to have some extra cuffs on me. Even if stuff went bad, maybe some extra zip ties in a, in a little container. Uh, you never know, right? So you have to use your imagination. You also have to forethink some of the problems that are that might arise and go from there. Make sure that you have these on hand. I'm going to go ahead and set this one up in case I need, ever need to use it. And, and I'm, then train. I'm looking forward to getting this equipment out, right? This is right about where I want it. Maybe just slightly to the rear. So, yeah. Get out there and train.
get out there and train. Next, we're going to talk about body armor and plate carriers and why I went with direct action once again. As always, stay safe out there.